Hi, Ray here. It's great to see you. I'm a bit late to this party by a couple of years, but I finally rationalized the purchase of a Ninja 5, Atomos Ninja 5 external monitor recorder to use with my Nikon Z6 camera. Now, Atomos and Nikon cooperated to make this recorder a superb addition for Nikon Z system users. Up until now, I've been pretty happy with the Z6's internal 8-bit video. That's mostly what I've been using for the last 18 months or so. But the Ninja adds 10-bit color depth log recording to the Z6 and Z7 cameras and the new Z7 II and Z6 II. And more recently, with a paid factory modification, and you'll need to send your camera into Nikon, 12-bit ProRes RAW, which is a first for mirrorless hybrid cameras. In fact, the Z cameras are the world's first cameras to record RAW over HDMI with the Ninja 5. Uh, since then, uh, I mentioned the new Z2 cameras. Nikon has added support for Blackmagic RAW. But anyway, the main advantage to greater bit depth, uh, just like in still photography, is a wider dynamic range capture. Something that's a big advantage with high contrast scenes containing deep shadows and bright highlights. In this video, I'll explain my reasons for adding the Ninja 5 to my video workflow. Admittedly, it's a more complex workflow than the 8-bit internal recording, and I'll show the preliminary rig I've assembled to use the recorder. In the future, I'll return with a video on the full rig. I've spent as much time researching that decision as buying the Ninja 5 itself. Yep, holiday sales got me. I was going to hold off until 2021 tax year to add more colors to my editing palette, but how could I pass up sale prices that equal US dollar buying power in Canada? So I got a great deal on this. The only downside to pushing the button was the amount of time it took for the Ninja and accessories to ship amidst the holiday rush. So now if you'll indulge me in a little bit of unboxing porn, the packaging on this thing is pretty slick. The graphics are nice. The black boxes, well it's black. Black seems to be a bit of a thing these days, just like the Nikon Z packaging. It even has a magnetic flap on the lid. That's a nice touch. On the top, here's the Ninja 5 recorder monitor itself. And the first thing we see on the screen cover is a recommendation to download the latest Atom OS firmware. It has a durable aluminum chassis all around. Yeah, it's, it's all aluminum. I think just the back here is plastic. On the back are inputs for power slash module dock and media. And underneath this phone layer, we get welcome to the Atomus family. In these compartments, a plethora of plugs for different regions. I think these include US, EU, UK, and Australia. The single media caddy, this is just the jacket, so to speak, for whatever SSD drive you decide to buy, and more on that later. The 12 volt 3A AC power supply itself. You choose the appropriate plug for your country and slide it into the sharp end of the power supply. The power module clips into the Ninja, and the power cable screws into the module, like so. The provided master caddy holds the drive of your choice, or rather, recommended drives, and Atomos offers a list of supported media. Inside the caddy are four screws. They're provided to secure the SSD. I opted for a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue to start off. If you go this route, you make sure to orient the drive correctly in the caddy so that the contacts line up correctly with the Ninja's inputs. Then it's just a matter of closing the caddy and screwing it together with the provided screws. Now, while I say it's just a matter, I mean prepare yourself for a bit of a fiddly job and make sure you have the right tools in hand. All being well, the caddy should slide into the Ninja nicely, albeit with an inch 
overhanging the unit. Now, more on that later. You get a quick start guide, but that's it. I recommend downloading the Ninja 5 user manual. I printed off a copy. That's good bedside reading. So, just buying the Ninja 5 doesn't get you all the wonders of external recording. Not quite. You'll need media, as mentioned, to record. Angelbird and Sony have made very nice SSDs that fit flush with the Ninja 5, but if that's not an issue for you, there are much cheaper options like the Western Digital Blue I chose. These, for instance, sell for $65 Canadian for 500 gigabyte, $150 for one terabyte. If you plan to move away from mains power, you'll need batteries. Sony MP-type batteries, one of these, this is a 5200 milliamp hour, will get you about two hours use. Of course, you'll need the appropriate charger for those. And you'll need an HDMI cable, full to mini for the Z cameras. In addition, at a minimum, you'll want to get some kind of mount to attach the monitor to the camera or camera cage. The least expensive way to accomplish this is with a hot cold shoe mount. And you can find one of these for as little as $10. I intend pretty soon to add a full camera cage with cold shoe mounts. My first accessory is the small rig tilting monitor mount with cold shoe. Now to transfer your files, update firmware, add LUTs, etc., Adam sells a dock, but I found this StarTech cable, um, which will work with my MacBook Pro. That does the job at a fraction of the price. The rest of the specs and features have been examined in detail by many reviewers, and I'm no expert when it comes to this stuff. For that, I'll leave you in the capable hands of fellow Canadians, Gerald Undone and Martin Heilbronn, from whom I've learned a great deal. Check out their websites. The initial setup is pretty straightforward. The first thing you'll want to do, as recommended earlier, is to check to see if your Ninja 5 has the latest firmware and update it if it doesn't. But first, you'll want to prepare your drive by formatting it. Tap the storage capacity indicator to go to the media menu. Make sure you set the date and time. Info shows the existing firmware version. Go to media, hit format, confirm, and the drive is formatted. Now you can see its capacity. Download the latest firmware from the Atomus website onto your computer. Plug in and drag the file onto your SSD. Plug the disk back into the Ninja and voila, it updates the device. Now you'll need to set up the camera to send out a signal via HDMI and to record analog gamma curve to make the most of the dynamic range your camera is capable of recording. So here's how you do it. First, open the HDMI menu Choose Output Resolution, open Advanced and choose Full Range, External Recording Control On, Output Data Depth 10-bit, and Log Setting of course On. To cancel Standby Mode so the camera has unlimited recording, go to Custom Settings C, Timers AE Lock, Power Off Delay C3, and set Standby Timer to no limit. On the Ninja 5's input indicator, we'll set the trigger to HDMI camera output to analog. For record, you'll choose your preferred codec. Nikon recommends 422HQ, but I have found other 422 settings work fine. You'll have to decide how big a file you're willing to store. On the camera, the low chroma image of the log recording shown on the rear screen can be switched to View Assist to approximate a graded image. You can load a LUT or lookup table to the Ninja to preview the look after applying the same LUT in your editing application of choice. I've added Nikon's 3D LUT to my Ninja 5. It's a pretty simple process. You download from Nikon and transfer via the drive in a similar way to updating the firmware. So you're set up to record analog and take advantage of the extended dynamic range and color grading options this offers. I should add here that my preliminary experiments indicate that the Nikon LUT should not be added at full strength 
at the editing stage. But I found this with most LUTs. I mean, most LUTs, you don't add them at 100%. Are there any downsides? Well, sort of. Unless you've opted for the ProRes RAW modification, with NLOG your base ISO is now 800, guaranteeing you're going to need neutral density filters to control the shutter speed and aperture if you're going to adhere to the 180 degree rule, and I presume you are. Also, NLOG has a 1.1 times crop factor, so you're losing a bit of that full frame video. It's small, but it's there. And finally, your files are going to be substantially larger. There's an app for that, and we can see that one minute of ProRes 422HQ is going to be about 8 gigabytes. That's fairly substantial. I'm thinking it's not that practical, so other 422 options are still pretty good. Theoretically, ProRes edits more smoothly, particularly if you're an Apple user. In practical terms, though, I found ProRes 4K still demands a fair amount of processing power, not to mention storage, so be prepared. For me, initially, I'll be learning just enough to take advantage of the Ninja 5's video formats, codec choices, and monitoring tools like Focus Peaking, Zebras, which I can't run at the same time as Focus Peaking on the Z6, False Color, how did I live without this? Luma Waveform, RGB Parade, Vector Scope, etc. Hi again, welcome back. The rest of this video was, is, being recorded on the Ninja 5 using 10-bit NLOG ProRes 422. I'll return with a more complete comparison video, but you can compare this with the first half of the video recorded internally on the Nikon Z6 8-bit with the flat profile. So what does this all mean for me in practical terms? My interest in external recording arises from the fact that I value quality in video just as much as I do in my still photography. So, since I started dabbling in video recording on YouTube 11 years ago, I've had to learn the technical ins and outs of video production. I started with a camera that could uh, record at 640. <laughs> anyway, it seems to me at least, if not more, complicated than the science of digital still photography. So over those years, I've had to develop at least a passing familiarity with things like chroma subsampling, LUTs, log recording, bit depth, and at least I had a little bit of an understanding of that from still photography, false color, zebras, and the other exposure tools. Though I'll still use internal 8-bit recording where it's appropriate, obviously log recording is going to provide the aforementioned quality advantages when needed. The monitor, of course, is bigger and brighter, at 1,000 nits of brightness. I can turn the monitor around to see myself while I'm recording, whereas I recorded blind until now. The larger screen, which is 5 inches compared to the 3.2 rear LCD on the Z6, is much better for critical focusing. The Ninja's professional monitoring tools, as I mentioned, really aid in precision exposure and to anticipate what the image will look like after grading. And recording externally escapes the 30 minute recording limit that you have to deal with when recording to the camera's card. Those are just a few of the advantages I'm enjoying with the addition of the Ninja 5. So do you have an external recorder or are you thinking about getting one? Do you think it's worth the extra expense? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps, especially as I near 1,000 subscribers. Happy filmmaking, everyone. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you again soon.